Hey everyone, peace to you, Cat Mobius here. Thanks for joining me as I once again attempt to stir the pot here that we call YouTube. Um, <laughs> this video has been kind of percolating in my head for quite some time now, last year or so. Uh, it kind of comes out of uh, ever since I started doing videos where I was more or less trying to play the devil's advocate for certain of the YouTube atheist community in here. I think there's a lot of fun drama going on. It's good theater. and uh, But there's a lot of hyperbole and there's a lot of just uh, out and out ridiculousness uh, as, as there is on the, the religious side as well. Um, no denying that. But I, again, I re I, I'm not an evangelist. I, I don't care so much about your soul. That's between you and God. Uh, and, and But I, I have tried on several occasions to play devil's advocate and, and point out some inconsistencies and discrepancies in, in certain atheist uh, beliefs and dogmas. And so that's what I'm doing here again today. I'm back and, you know, opinion alert, opinion alert. This is just my opinion, folks, but, uh, so don't take it too seriously. But one thing that I get all the time, I get, uh, because I really like science and, and biology and in particular physics, and I do a lot of reading and, and always have in those areas, and I try and stay current on things, and it just seems to me, it cracks me up because, uh, it seems to just bug certain atheists to no end. It's like they feel that I have absolutely no uh, right to be <laughs> talking even about science if I'm going to be so uh, uh, silly and naive as to believe in, in anything as ridiculous as God. And so I've been, I've been, you know, had a lot of these assertions made also as well that, that uh, science has somehow provided this, uh, you know, ultimate authoritative coup de grace uh, to these these antiquated and childish notions of God, and that, uh, you know, all I need to do is it, they're either they're either telling me to open a book or or when I, you know, make the point that I do actually uh, have a pretty good working knowledge of of uh, biology and physics and things like that, uh, you know, then they're intimating that uh, somehow I really don't get it. Um, so with that being said, I, 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 I really disagree with that. I think it's kind of funny. I just want to point out uh, to some folks, there is in particular a, uh, a branch of physics, theoretical physics, which is called string theory. And it, this is really fascinating to me because I feel uh, that that string theory, rather than you know the the standard assertion that uh, science somehow uh, uh, provides this de facto refutation of of any kind of possibility of the existence of God, uh, string theory actually to me is very exciting because in many ways I think that it might help to reconcile uh, science and and the supernatural, the, the, the something bigger out there uh, than just chance and circumstance and big bangs and things like that. And uh, opens up a lot of possibilities for that reconciliation to me. So what I want to do is rather than, you know, get uh, too wrapped up in the whole thing, um, string theory is simply the, the th theory that physicists have come up with to try and explain the dichotomy between uh, the way that, uh, you know, Einstein's theory of relativ relativity and quantum mechanics explain the very, very big uh, uh, planets and, and solar systems and things like that. When we gain the ability to look at the very, very small subatomic particles, things of this nature, uh, we noticed that the, there was a great difference. They didn't behave the same way. They didn't follow the same rules. 
And so string theory has attempted, and I think very elegantly so in many cases, uh, attempted to reconcile and, and to provide uh, the, the, the missing evidence and information as to why this is so. And the latest of these is, is called M-theory, or the theory of everything it's, it's starting to be called. I want to play for you a, a brief video. I want you to pay particular attention to a gentleman uh, named Michio Kaku, Dr. Michio Kaku. Uh, one of the pioneers of the development of string theory did uh, many of the very first papers on various uh, uh, branches and elements of string theory, supersymmetry, uh, uh, hadronic theory, things like that. So uh, please listen to Dr. Michio Kaku and what he has to say about the possibilities for string theory. String theory has been developed for 20 years now. The latest version is called M-theory, and almost all physicists have huge hope for it as a theory of everything. But to explain gravity's weakness, the theory has to be constructed in 9, 10, even 11 dimensions it sounds like science fiction, but string theorists believe those extra dimensions to be real. In fact, they seem to be all around us. String theory, in addition to the three space dimensions that we're familiar with, sideways, up, and across, um, there are some extra dimensions. In the simplest versions of the theory, we say there are six extra dimensions, um, which we don't see directly in, in the physical world, um, but nevertheless, they could be there. We don't notice the extra dimensions because they're outside our 3D universe. Some could be bigger than our three dimensions. Our entire universe could be sitting inside a higher dimension. We're a bit like fish in a tank, unaware of the world outside, unaware of the extra dimensions. Today, we physicists believe that we are the fish. We spend all our lives in three dimensions, going forward, backward, left, right, and up and down, not realizing that there could be other dimensions, other universes, other ponds, perhaps as many as 11 dimensions in a multiverse of universes. Like fish in a fishbowl, and we don't know what's on the other side of the glass. Now, I hope everyone was listening to what Dr. Kaku said, because what we have here is one of the top theoretical physicists of our, our generation stating his firm belief in the possibility of the existence of unseen extra-dimensional realms. We don't even know what a, a dimension might possibly consist of. So if, you, if you're if you going to listen to scientists like Stephen Hawking and, and Dr. Michio Kaku say that there's a very good possibility, in fact they are trying to find the evidence for it every day uh, of, of these invisible dimensions that are somehow all around us and in one way shape or form affect our three-dimensional world and you're not going to brand them as delusional or juvenile or any of the other epithets that are that are given to religious people who believe in in God and, and unseen uh, realms and dimensions like heaven and hell and so you either have to you either have to consider that these physicists are as delusional as theists for their beliefs because there is no real evidence for string theory for extra dimensions there's only the the vaguest residue of, of evidence but this is the scenario. This is the only theory that science can put together to make sense of everything. And it includes these multiple unseen dimensions. 
So I think at the very least, uh, you should quit saying that religious people are uh, uh, delusional and definitely stop saying that science trumps God somehow. Anyway, it's just my opinion. Thanks. Leave your comments. Leave your opinions. I'm interested. Peace. We'll see you next time.